Chairman, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Almasi, a shareholder from Washington, D.C., who has a comment about the cost of vehicles. Thank you. Thank you. As mentioned, I'm David Almasi. I'm with the National Center for Public Policy Research, a free market think tank and a company shareholder. I want to ask you today about the confluence of two issues the company faces, sticker shock and government regulations. There's no doubt that the auto industry and the Ford Motor Company have made tremendous strides in innovation and technology in the past 20 years. Uh, in most markets, increased technologies lead to market efficiencies that drive costs downward, but this has not been so much the case in the automotive industry. We believe one part of the answer is the disconnect, um, and for this disconnect is unnecessary government regulations. Unnecessary regulations are imposed on manufacturers, added to the price of each car, and passed on to the customers. Let me cite a few recent examples. In March, the U.S. Department of Transportation finalized a rule that will require all new vehicles under 10,000 pounds to have backup cameras by mid-2018. DOT estimates in 2018 the rule will cost around half a billion dollars, but we all know that government math can tend to be fuzzy. Uh, then there are CAFE standards. In 2012, the Obama administration set new CAFE standards that call for an average fleet, uh, um, a fleet average of 35.5 miles per gallon by 2016 and 54.5 by 2025. The National Auto Dealers Association has noted this will possibly add $3,000 to the price of a new car by 2025. But these are just a few examples of government interference in the market resulting in increased costs for Ford's products, and I'm sure you can rattle off dozens if not hundreds more. This leads to my two-part question. First, what can the company do to educate the American public about the problem and blunt Washington's destructive participation in the motor vehicle market? And second, when you list the price of a new vehicle, might you consider showing the exact amount of the price that went into complying with unnecessary government regulations? That way, when consumers experience sticker shock, they can direct to, to, the, responsibility, or to the responsible party in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Omasi. <laughs> uh, that was a very thoughtful question and statement. Um, well, we, could, we could talk about this all day, actually. Um, but I think, Alan, do you want to take a, a crack at, at, at it first? You bet. Uh, really, uh, very thoughtful question, and we think about it um, all the time, as, as you can imagine. The, maybe one of the neatest things that we found out uh, over the, the last uh, um, eight years is really focusing on what the customers want and value, to your point. And it's very interesting that in the United States and also around the world now, that consumers really value uh, quality, fuel efficiency, and low CO2, the safety features that you described, also the connectivity, and, of course, uh, Henry Ford's original vision of the very best value. And so we have been absolutely laser focused on delivering that brand promise. And to your point, as a technology company, we've been able to find a lot of fabulous enabling technologies to continuously improve the quality, fuel efficiency, safety, uh, and the smart design. The other position that Ford has taken is to work together in the most collaborative way with the legislators and the regulators. And that has not always been necessarily the, the uh, past practices. And a lot of things uh, were not done in a working together way where all of that insight and that analysis could be, be included. But we are very pleased to be part of the solution. We're in all of those negotiations on all of the new regulations. And we are going to continue to be laser focused to ensure that the technology that we can bring to bear can absolutely continue to deliver on what the consumers really want and do that in the most, uh, the most cost effective manner. Because to your point, uh, that value is the most important thing in addition to the quality, uh, the fuel efficiency, and the safety. I also might point out that another really neat thing about our Ford is that with our scale and the fact that we are serving customers around the world and working with the re regulators around the world, we're able to deliver the value uh, of that scale. And so every vehicle that we make and design and deliver around the world helps us uh, provide even more value to uh, the consumers in the United States as well as around the world. So it's a really important issue, and I think that all of us being aware uh, of, of what people are thinking about and then working it together is the most important thing that we continue to do, and Ford's very pleased to take a, a leadership role in that. 
Thank you, Alan. And I would just add that um, Alan mentioned you know, that we, we do work well with uh, government, and that's so important that we have a seat at the table and that we have a voice, because if we do see uh, ideas that we think literally you know, make no sense, we have a chance to get in early in that discussion. And, uh, and we don't always win those discussions, but at least we're heard and can help often shape the outcome. Uh, and that's different than it was you know, even 10 years ago. Thank you. Uh, number one.